So for the first time in a while, I did a video about something pertaining to TNA. I know, imagine that. It almost felt good and therapeutic in a way to be able to do that again. And I suppose what's even more surprising to a lot of you is that I did a mostly positive one about Billy Corgan joining TNA. That's how I felt. I think it could be a good thing. I think it represents a lot of potentially really good things for the company, at least from a creative and production standpoint. So, you know, I decided to talk about it. And, you know, I, I have to say, TNA fans are magnificent creatures. You guys really are. I wish I had your passion right now for professional wrestling and for a specific company. I wish I had that unbridled love for wrestling or for a specific company right now. I wish I had that fight in me that you guys do. Because I respect the hell out of it, and I admire it out of you. I really, really do. And it's part of what makes you guys truly magnificent creatures. And I also love the way you guys kind of rally behind each other and unite towards a common goal, against a common enemy. I like your kind of us-against-the-world mentality and how everybody and everything is kind of conspiring against you. And for a kind of fundamental conspiracy theorist like myself always believes there's more to the story and there is something always holding us down. I have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for that. I really, truly do. However, sometimes some of you guys have pathetically predictable patterns of behavior that I, that I wish you didn't have, you've had for years, and I don't envision stopping anytime soon. And, you know, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's humorous, sometimes it's frustrating, sometimes it's just flat out annoying. And sometimes it blurs the lines between what exactly it is. Well, when I did that video about Billy Corgan, I just knew somehow, some way, that some of the same old things were going to be talked about in the comments section. I just knew it. I just absolutely knew it. And I don't know why that is. It, it just is what it is. And I knew it was going to come. So I just wanted to talk about some of these things that the TNA fans talked about in that video and some of the general themes that TNA fans talk about when it comes to their company, the WWE and professional wrestling as a whole. Now, I thought the video I did about Billy Corgan was mostly positive, in fact, very positive and all sunny side up kind of optimistic. And there goes my right eye twitching. So Andre Corbell, yes, you don't know whether I'm telling the truth or not. Um, but I thought it was very positive. I thought it was very optimistic. You know, it's probably somewhat refreshing that I had a positive talk topic pertaining to professional wrestling to talk about. And I thought I made a good case. It was an outstanding video, but I thought I made a good case. But somehow, some way, instead of the fundamental discussion in the comments being about the merits of what was discussed, the topics discussed, the viewpoints discussed, it slowly progressed into the same type of crap that it always seems to do. It becomes this us-against-the-world garbage. It becomes this thing about how TNA is so star-spangled awesome, how much the WWE sucks, and that people are idiots for watching that instead of watching TNA. It always comes down to this. Like, you'll see it on WWE videos. TNA fans will be shitting on WWE and walk, talking about TNA. They come on TNA videos, they'll do the same thing, even more so than the, the stupid WWE fans will do. It's just, why? I get that you love your company and you have a passion for the product and what it stands for, what you believe in, and that's great. But can you make the case for it without having to th try and throw somebody else under the bus? And why does that other company, why does anything else even matter? Why not worry about what you do? Why not worry about what your company does well? Why not sit there and worry about why your product is good to you and try to sell those points specifically without having to take the old political route of trying to run everybody else into the ground and then trying to give some kind of misconstrued kind of slanted viewpoint as to why your stuff is better. I'm just saying. So here's some of the things I saw in the comments that I did want to talk about here because, again, it just points to just how magnificent of creatures TNA fans truly are. Now, one thing I got was, how do you know what TNA is doing if you're not watching? Well, a couple of things. Number one, if you are going to leverage that against me, and maybe that's a somewhat fair assessment, um, how would you know what WWE is doing if you're not watching? For a lot of you TNA fans that use anti-WWE stuff as a bit of your big-time pro-TNA 
uh, defense and offense, how would you know what WWE is doing if you're not watching? So how would that make you any different from me? So you can have a viewpoint about something you don't watch, but I can't have a viewpoint about something I don't watch. But also then, if that's not the case, then that means that you're still watching WWE. And in a lot of cases, I believe that's the case, especially because you're coming on WWE videos and sites and commenting about WWE. So if it was so bad, then why are you still watching it? If TNA is so much better, why are you so concerned with WWE? If TNA is so better, why is WWE even a footnote in your imagination, thoughts, or minds? Why is that even wasting any of your space in your brain, any of your thoughts, any of your breaths? I don't get it. But as far as how do I know what TNA is doing, you know, you could sit there and read spoilers. You can see what people talk about on social media. You could do different things to find out what's going on. But I sit there and I look at the website and, you know, I talked about with Billy Corgan. I thought part of the thing was he'd be a refreshing breath of fresh air for the company from a creative and production standpoint. People say, well, they're already doing creative and productive things and they're doing different things. And maybe they have changed some things about their presentation. I don't dispute that. However, when I look, Kurt Angle is their world champion. The Hardy Boys are their tag champions and Taryn Terrell is their knockouts champion. To me, that does reek of Destination America telling TNA who the hell they want as the champions. That's the same type of crap Spike TV used to do. That's not change. That's the exact same thing, just in a different format on a different network. And then when you look specifically with all of these former WWE people that became stars, and mine's Terry Terrell, obviously, with the WWE, but especially with Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy. These are guys from an era long since gone. They've been at the top you know, for years of TNA, especially Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy. And there they are. They're still there. They're still at the very top. So how is that any different? Is TNA still having random stipulation matches like street fights and hardcore matches that aren't called for? Did they overdo it way too often? I'm sure they do. In fact, based off of some of the stuff I read, I know for a fact they do. How is that any different? And in particular, when I talked about Billy Corgan, here's the key thing. I mentioned that all of the mainstream American professional wrestling is incredibly out of touch with the current United States culture and climate. Uh, socially and what have you. And that is true, and I stand by that. And there is no real good argument that you could give that says anything other than that is true. It is WWE, that is TNA or ROH. It does not matter. The characters aren't relevant to the times. The storylines and the subject matter most certainly aren't relative and relevant to the times. So bringing in a guy like Billy Corgan to help him maybe in that matter is a really good thing. Why not sit there and acknowledge that it's true? Because it touches on the next thing. For the TNA fans that sit there and say everything that the company does is great and that they never make a mistake. And you know who you are and you know that you do. And don't sit there and try and pretend that you're critical of them in any way, shape, or form. Look, I get that you love it and you have a passion for it. I respect that. Again, I wish I had that passion for something right now when it comes to professional wrestling. But the fact of the matter is, just because you sit there and profess your love for everything and defend everything that they do, that doesn't make you any better or any more significant or any more seriously taken of a fan. Just because you might occasionally get a pop from somebody in the business retweeting you or talking to you doesn't make you any better. It doesn't mean they like you anymore. Sitting there and being positive about it all the time doesn't make you look any better because a lot of those people that might sit there and pretend like they agree with you actually don't agree with you and think that this is horseshit. You know, in order for things to be able to be changed for the better and specifically, you have to be honest with yourselves. You have to be honest about the way things are. If you sit there and always try to gloss over everything and paint it with a whitewash and say everything is great and awesome, then nothing ever changes. It always gets worse. That's what's happened to the WWE. Everybody around Vince is telling Vince how great it is. Well, he thinks it's great. He's going to do the same shit and it gets even worse. It doesn't get better. And all these fans that sit there and always defend everything they do and talk about how awesome it is, have your standards lowered that much? Or B, are you just trying to sit there and justify to yourself and defend to yourself more than anything else why you're supporting this company and why you're watching that product? And I wonder that when I look at certain TNA fans and some of the things they say and don't say about the company and their product. If the company was so great, they would be in a whole lot better position. If the company and the product was so awesome, they wouldn't be on Destination America, and that's a fact. That doesn't mean you can't love it. It doesn't mean that you can't like it. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a passion for it. By all means, have it. But if anything, if you sit there and you go into an argument about professional wrestling and all you do is crap on WWE and everything they do, 
uh, and then all you do is praise everything TNA does, it comes across like politics and you lose credibility because nobody and nothing is perfect. So why not be honest about those things that aren't good, those things that are wrong, you know, and then maybe emphasize, yes, obviously the positives, but give, you know, good suggestions as to what could change to make it better. Why would you not want the company to grow and get better? By sitting there and acknowledging that in your mind everything is great, you're not helping. You're causing a problem. You're not helping to solve a problem. So I don't get it. I don't get why so many TNA fans feel the need to always go on WWE-related videos and bash WWE and just talk about TNA when TNA is not even in the thought process, not even part of the subject matter. And frankly, in the Billy Corgan video, WWE really wasn't much of a subject matter either. It was brought in at brief moments just as a comparison point, and that was it. Barely brought up. And yet it becomes this whole fucking thing, and this shit needs to stop. This whole thing about uh, Destination America being where Impact Wrestling is is no excuse for me not to watch. Well, yes, it is. Why should I have to stream their show in order to watch it? And as far as the whole thing about, well, it's not that much to get Destination America, do you know my cable package? Do you know what it would cost me to get it? Yes, in order to get it, because it is a premium channel, as part of a premium package, in order to get up enough through Verizon, in order to get that channel, it's going to cost me enough extra, I believe it's 30 or 35 bucks a month. That basically makes a pay-per-view. Because most of the other channels included in that package I would not watch. And I'm not willing to sit there and basically fork over 30, 35 bucks a month to watch two hours of a mediocre wrestling show to me every single week, just to review it. I'm not willing to do that. And I find that funny that a lot of you that will sit there and tell me that it's not that much have never paid for an actual TNA pay-per-view because you've always streamed it. If you love this company so much and you support this company so much, then why don't you put your money where your mouth is and actually support the company by buying more of their merchandise, paying for more of the pay-per-views that they ever actually have done, and buying you know tickets to their events, going to their events, actually paying for their network instead of streaming the shit? Let's sit there and get on me about it when you know damn good well a lot of you are doing the same fucking thing. And no, I shouldn't have to stream it. And I don't want to hear this crap, American Alicard, about the internet and it's okay to stream it. No, it's not. I shouldn't have to do that. And, you know, if you talk about maybe they put it on their website, yeah, what, a week or two later? I shouldn't have to wait that long either. You know, that's part of the problem with TNA going to Destination America. I'm not willing to pay that much in order to watch it on my TV, and I want to watch it on my TV, not my crappy, outdated laptop. And then the word, dumbest thing of all that I saw was I think it was Gilzone was trying to tell me why I don't do TNA videos or specifically impact reviews anymore and talk about that I care too much about views to do them. You know, and this, and this is where we get into the silly season of TNA fans, and this is why you are majestic true creatures and why you fascinate me so much because sometimes some of the shit you say is just the most ridiculous stuff I've ever heard. I'm just being honest. Because... What you say makes absolutely no sense because if I cared that much about views, I do more videos on this channel. I would do more wrestling videos on this channel, and in particular, and most specifically at all, I would do more TNA videos, especially impact reviews. Way, way back when I started doing this whole thing. I would do Raw reviews, Impact reviews, and SmackDown reviews, and consistently the Impact review would outdraw the SmackDown review in terms of viewership, and there were plenty of times where the Impact review did as much, if not more, than the Raw review for that particular week. One of the biggest things that helped me stand out amongst a crowded field in terms of YouTube people talking about wrestling was a soon Jeff Jarrett position. So for you to sit there and say that I care about views too much, or that because I care only about views... That's why I stopped doing TNA videos. It's some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And you frankly have no legs to stand on, and you sound ridiculous saying it. And anybody defending you also sounds ridiculous. Because by not doing anything TNA related, I have shrunk my audience, not grown my audience. Do we understand how that would negatively, not positively, impact viewership numbers? So if anything, it would be better off for me to sit there and review TNA Impact every week and talk about Impact and, and TNA in general as a company all the time because I'd be expanding the sweep and scope of this channel, bringing back former viewers of this channel that became disenfranchised with me and this channel for many different reasons, among them the fact that it just became basically a WWE network and we stopped fucking talking about TNA. If I cared that much about views, I would be doing TNA videos.
consistently because there is a big segment of audience on here on YouTube that I don't appeal to that doesn't come to me because I don't talk about the product that they prefer, uh, love, and admire. It makes no sense. If I care that much about views, I do a lot more 15 reasons this sucks or this guy sucks or that guy sucks type of videos or other reasons type of videos, and I don't do them. I use bullshit misleading titles, making you think that you were actually clicking on this 15-minute video, you know, let's say, for an example, to watch a specific match between, let's say, Bobby Lashley and Kurt Angle for the TNA World Heavyweight title. I don't do that crap. You know a lot of other people here on YouTube in this wrestling community that do that crap. Use bullshit and misleading titles all the fucking time. If I cared that much about views, don't you think I would have learned from some of those people that got a lot more views on their channel and a lot more subscribers and I would do the same damn thing? Don't you think if I cared that much about views that I would make a lot longer videos? Don't you think? Because I'll tell you this much. Somebody who figured this out and was perfectly positioned to benefit when YouTube changed their algorithms for how they featured and promoted channels was Bruce Blitz. Here was a guy that two, three years ago, a lot of people hadn't heard of, a lot of people weren't familiar with. But what did he do? He got on board with the live streams, so he incorporated more people, bringing other people in. He networked incredibly well. He had a website to be kind of that uh, center of the spider web that everything else could spill off of and funnel off of. He got people to pay for it and invest in him and invest in what he was doing. And most importantly of all, he used YouTube as a base to be able to grow and expand that audience directly to that website and what have you because he sat there and started doing two-hour videos and three-hour videos and so on and so forth and understanding that the type of algorithm that YouTube used now instead of being based off of views and views alone, it was going to be based off of view time because to YouTube it was incredibly important how long people actually spent on the site at a single visit. So, for example, if I sit there and do a video like this, let's say that's 20 to 25 minutes, and you watch 18 to 20 minutes of that, you're maybe watching 80 to 90 percent of the video. That sounds great in theory. I've got a good audience retention throughout the video. That's very true. Whereas a Bruce Blitz could sit there and do, let's say, a video for three hours and people watch 30 minutes and they say, fuck this shit, that's enough. Who's more valuable to YouTube? Beyond question, the answer is Bruce Blitz. Because he consistently gets a certain amount of people to watch, and they watch longer. They spend more time on the site. Therefore, they are going to market his channel, cross-promote his channel more, and his channel exploded. So if I cared that much about views, wouldn't I look for ways to grow the scope of my audience and the reach of my channel by incorporating many of the things that somebody like a Bruce Blitz was able to do so expertly and so masterfully. And I don't like when people sit there and knock on him or hate on him for things like that. I don't just I don't agree with everything he says, and nor will I. However, I applaud the man for being one thing that he doesn't get enough credit for, is being very smart when it comes to the YouTube game and understanding how it works and utilizing the system the way it was to his incredible advantage. And he did a magnificent job of that. And we should applaud him for that, not knock him for that. So if I care that much about views, why would I not look at Bruce Blitz as an example of somebody who got the new way of doing it when, frankly, I was stuck in the old way of doing it? And furthermore, wouldn't I do a much better job of promoting this channel? Wouldn't I be putting video links in forums? Wouldn't I be sitting there and bothering to even tweet out the links to the videos that I do? You know, tweet them out, put them on Facebook, put them in wrestling groups on Facebook, all that. Half the time now, I don't care enough to even bother to do that. But I care so much about views. Makes no sense to me. And then lastly of all, this whole thing of you have a WWE bias and always will. I don't really see where that is relevant, one, to a video where I was talking specifically about TNA and a decision that they made and a very positive decision at that, you might not like it, you might be butthurt about the fact that I don't watch your precious company, but that's tough shit. And as far as a bias, yeah, there is always going to be a bit of a bias there because for a lot of you, I was sitting there watching the WWF when you were still resting in your daddy's ball sack. I was sitting there watching the Mega Powers explode where many of you weren't even a twinkle in your parents' eyes, and if you were, more likely not, you were crap in your pampers. It's hard to just walk away from that after 30 fucking years. I don't give a damn what anybody says. Some people might be able to do that, and good for them. I applaud them for that. 
It's like a guilty pleasure to me, and I just can't give it up. And at the end of the day, if I'm going to sit there and I've watched five wrestling companies for five years, and all of a sudden I start to lose interest and stop caring, I'm going to peel back on what I watch. And the last dog standing, so to speak, is WWE, and that's exactly what's happened now. Because of that history, because of how much of a part of the fabric of my life from childhood to being a teenager to early adulthood to adulthood to manhood has been a part of my life and a big part of the identity of who I am. So yes, there's going to be a little bit of a bias there. But do not dare sit there and tell me that because there is a bit of a WWE loyalty bias there that I sit there and spin things positively in the WWE standpoint. If you think that you are a fucking moron, and if you think I can't independently judge TNA based solely on the merits or non-merits of TNA and what TNA does, then you are also a moron and haven't paid attention enough to me or this channel over the years to be able to understand it. Bringing up all this shit that has nothing to do with the subject matter doesn't help. Sitting there and always trying to spark this TNA versus WWE debate gets old. And you know what happens? It's like the boy that always cries wolf and eventually start to get tuned out. You know, and as far as me having a WWE bias, well, maybe if TNA would have done better shit over the past few years, maybe it wouldn't be such a bias. Maybe I'd have more loyalty to TNA. Maybe I'd feel more inclined to watch them on Destination America or figure out another way to watch them and still support the company. But again, with all that being said, I applaud you guys because you have a passion for your company and your product uh, that I only wish I could have about any company or any wrestling product right now. There's nothing wrong with fighting for your product. There's nothing wrong for defending your product. I just sometimes think you maybe should go about doing it a different way. Just a polite suggestion. I sometimes think that maybe if you've tried the same tactics for such a long period of time and they haven't worked, that maybe it's time to explore changing them. You know... It's okay to sell TNA and try to promote TNA and talk up TNA, but can't you just do it based off of its own merits and talk about it in the right context and stop bringing up other shit that doesn't really matter and isn't relevant to the subject to hand? No, probably not. It'd probably just always be more of the same old stuff. It's been that way for 13 years now. I don't see why it'd be any different. God bless you. That's why TNA fans are magnificent creatures.